tree Yeah Could I be sick without remedy Yeah, yeah Welcome along to the aluminium skin tutorial. Um, this is basically a tutorial for uh, Astromech builders. So I'm assuming that you're a member of the Astromech forum and you know what I mean, you've already got your frame and you've got your skins to hand. Most, most likely you've already got your skins and you're about to prepare them and cut them and paint them and get them up on your frame. Well, step one, planning. First thing you got to do, you get for this four skins. There's two inner skins, two outer skins. You got to work out what are the front and what are the rear skins. All right, I'm going to show you um, the skins I have in a minute, so it'll be it will all become clear. Uh, you need to decide what panels, if any, that you want to open. Get your tools and your working space ready. All right, this is your first step planning. Anybody who's built an R2D2, who's been around for a little while, will tell you the most important thing with building R2 is preparation. All right, here's some rough footage, yeah? These, these are the skins. Now, what you'll see on the skins, you have, you have inner skin and outer skin. The inner skin connects to, so this is the inner skin over here. This skin, um, aluminium skin, this um, screws or, or captive bolts onto the frame. I'm using an aluminium frame. If it was a wooden frame, it could bolt straight on. So you'd find secure points, you'd go straight through and you connect it to the wooden frame. Um, when you have an aluminium frame, as you will see later on, you have to have skin blocks and then you, you screw it, those to the frame and then this will screw into the um, skin blocks. Now you can get 3D printed skin blocks that work perfectly well. Um, I've used them in the past and you know what I mean? That's probably your cheapest way of doing this um so the inner skins we've got what the idea is in the outer skin covers it in the skin and it hides the place where you put the bolts and these skins we glue to these we don't use conventional glue we use a transfer tape a vhb tape which i will let you know exactly what one to get what one it is all right there's different types you don't want to get the wrong one so depending on how many panels you want opening would depend on um how much how much things get removed um so there are different types of skins that you can order so the main thing would be does your frame have a back door if your frame has a back door then you will need the cutout going all the way around where the back door will be okay sometimes that that is sealed so it's not you know it's an option that you need to make sure you you, you know what you're getting um but all of these panels will come out and it will it will make sense as you do it so just trust me <laughs> trust me um start removing the panels what you'll find is that you have niches silicon niche i don't know if that's a real english term but the niche is here and we're gonna cut those out these have been laser cut and have been pre-rolled um but you've still got work to do and quite a bit of work it can seem complicated but it's really not man because it's pretty simple panels like this are made so that they would pop out so i'll show you just a little bit of twisting and the panel will pop out okay you might want to just get a file um don't know if you can see the little edge you know and you, then you would file that down so now it's going to be a lot of cutting and a lot of filing so step two cutting and filing uh yeah i'll tell you a, a good idea is to number or mark the rear of the skins so so you can identify where things come from so if it's, a, if it's a you know a rectangle part that's coming out, write number one on it, and then write number one onto the what's left over onto the skin, um, and so on and so forth, just so you know where things go. All right, so things go back in exactly the right place. Um, so yeah, there's a lot of cutting, uh, and and you know we're gonna get to the filing, but the cutting can become very tedious. It's long, um, so you might want to do it in two shifts. You know what I mean? It it, it does take long. So it's necessary, do you know what I mean? It's gotta be done. And the same with the filing, the filing's gotta be done. Now, you'll notice I call it, I call these things niches. I will sometimes call them notches. I don't know what the correct term is, do you know what I mean? And I, yo, it's, this is how I speak. And hopefully you can understand me and you know what I'm talking about and you can get the job done. That's the important thing. This is the sort of blade you need to use. So you can get that end in. Um, some people use a Dremel. I wouldn't use the Dremel personally because I think you, you know, 
potentially you could cut into the wrong bit or I think it's a bit overkill. I think this is perfect, does the job well. Um, I think quite a few builders would probably agree that this is what they would use. Um, someone may have an even better idea. Okay, I thought it'd be better to show you this part. Um, when you're taking these arms out, I leave I leave this 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 uh, this whole area comes on comes off right. You cut right along there. So this whole section comes out, um, and these are two separate pieces. However, it's much better to take the, these arms out because you could easily bend. This material is very soft, very pliable, easy to dent it, get kinks in it, and ruin your skins. So you've got to take time. But with this. I find it best to support the the, outer, the skin that you're using and push this through. See, look, I already just bent it, but very, very careful. And you push it in, all right, this is being removed. It's got a little niche, and then just wiggle it side to side until one of the ends gives. All right, see it there? All right, and then it comes off. Otherwise, whoops. All the rubbish is going there. Otherwise, if you take these off and do it, these could easily get bent and kinked, which you don't want to happen. Okay, what we're doing now, we're, we're um, popping out all the panels first. All the panels that can pop out, whilst they're on a rigid um, frame, as it were, we are popping them out. And you literally got to be careful because you could easily bend things, yeah? I said that earlier. And make sure you're clear on each side and just twist it back and forth until it comes off in your hands. Uh, you can see the difference with a niche, you need to cut that um, with these ones which are, have very small little pieces on them. So it's the inners that are coming out and you don't need these, these are, these are going. Probably not the best but you can see my feet, what I've done is put the skin and I'm just, just squeeze it, just, I mean squeeze it slightly so you're just touching it so it's, it's more rigid when you're cutting so if, otherwise you're cutting it's all loose like that so just squeeze it between your feet and then so when you're cutting it's not it's not so bad you know i would use two hands to cut but just to, for demonstration i'm not going to cut you know what i'm saying so hold, it your feet. hold it between your feet so it's not so bad all right so just a little tip okay we're at a point of decision a point of decision um what panels do you want opening on your skins? So this has to open because this is the center vents. So this, this is a piece that just pops out. These are ones you have to cut out. Um, this is where your um, data ports will be. So if you're gonna have an opening door with all the flashy lights inside, then you need to cut this panel out because you need, need to put a hinge on it so it can open. So the panels, let me try and show you. Yeah, the panels are made up. So you, once it's filed down, the outer skin would go on. This is the inner skin. The outer skin would go on and then this, is basically a door, all right? That's it, it's, it's, it's um, the outside panel will go here, go over that. So if you want it to be a door, you need to cut it out. If you don't want that to be a door, then you can leave it as it is, and then you're just sticking out a panel. This will save you a lot of work. These panels need to come out, these are proper panels, because although you may not want them to open or not, this is the, th these panels don't have that the recessed area. So it's a, it'll be a rectangle that fits inside that with the gap around it. So you, the only way you get that effect is to remove them, all right? But then of course you've got the option, you could do something there and make it so it comes out, you know what I mean? So these ones as well, I hope you can see this on the camera. But these will pop out as well. I need to get to that with two hands really. Um, this one. And it is a point of twisting them back and forth and then it will just come off eventually it says and it's not even <laughs> so I'm thinking again 
twist it into it. So this would need to cut if you want this to open. If you don't want it to open, you can, you can leave it in place. Um, so if they have niches, they need to cut. If they're pop-outs, they need to pop-outs. So if they're like this, where it's just got two little pieces on the side holding it, they need to come out because the panel is gonna go inside, all right? So this again, this will be a door. Um, although it pops out, some people use that um, and have like charging ports and stuff in there. If you want it to be a door, you need to pop it out. What you don't want to do is mix up your aluminium, all right? Put them in piles. When you take your front skin off, put them in a pile. Um, back skins, put them in a pile. So you know what belongs to what. Um, also, you don't want to spend all your time prepping and cleaning panels that you've popped off. Panels that are, are not going to be used. Yeah, these are not going to be used. So you don't want to do that. So keep looking at your reference picture. Keep looking. What goes here? Okay, this is the octagon port. Right, you don't need that panel. That can go. Um, here, this, sorry, this is the octagon port. That is the power coupler. This is the octagon port goes here. So, so same again, you go around here, you've got the um, coin, re coin return, coin slots, obviously. And this will be a, um, a, a, a vent, a, what you call a pocket vent, and then you've got side vents. Um, so yeah, so for, for, for what I'm doing here, these will get removed. Um, so if a later date I want to use it, so I'm not making doors at the moment, no intention. But the two long side ones, I will remove those. These, I will leave. All right, I hope that's helpful. Okay, so once you've got the, all the parts cut out, I'll probably skin see this. This is what will make up the back door. You can see what I was saying about pieces covering. And it's gonna have a piece inside as well, like that. And then that'll be, yeah, that'll be the back door. So these, these notches here will not be seen. They will be covered. These, However, can you see them there? I have to point them with my thumb. They need to be removed, they need to be filed. So all of this has to get filed. So the next job is to file all the notches off. That's all the notches off of all the pieces. You can see here. You can see right there with my tip of my thumb. They've, they've got to go. It's very noticeable once it's all put on, yeah? So you've got to file all those notches off. All the notches off of all of the aluminium. All the pieces, so there's four skins, um, plus you know the back door obviously. So you need to file all the notches off, and then you need to wash it. You need to wash the aluminium. You've got a lot of aluminium dust. You can't really see it, but you need to wash it all down um, before we prepare to paint. So that's what's next. All right, so you've cut all your pieces out. You file them down, they're all smooth, everything's good. It's now time to wash them. Wash your the skins in warm, soapy water. This will remove any of the aluminium dust. You may not be able to see it, but there's a lot of dust created just from the, the cutting and even more so from the filing. Um, so you need to you need to wash them down and also to get the grease, um, any grease and dirt off of them as well. And then dry them, um, use like a lint-free lint cloth um, you know what I mean? Because what, what you'll find is the edges will will gather, um, the edges of the aluminium, sorry, the piece that you've cut off, will gather bits of material, little bits of fibres, and that will cause a problem when it comes to painting. So be very careful how you dry them, you know what I mean? That you don't rub along the edges of it, just dry that, the main surface area. So here we are, some pieces uh, that have been washed, and you can see fibres. Can you see the fibres on it? Not good. Um, Obviously, I'll clean that up before we paint. But then we move on to the primer now. This is something we need to talk about. So etching primer contains phosphoric acid. And when I say contains, it's a very small um, level of phosphoric acid. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that correctly. Phosphoric, that is how I read it. Um, basically, on the, warning on, on the warning labels, it's going to tell you that it is... Um, it's, it can be an irritant to the skin. It can be an irritant to the respiratory system. Um, it's extremely harmful if it goes in your eyes. That's a that's a that's a problem if it goes in your eyes, and um, it it's it's a thing that you need to read the, the warning labels. What I would say to you when you use etching primer is to make sure you wear an appropriate mask for spray painting, um, and you're in you know it's well ventilated, and and the sort of precautions that you should be taking anyway when you're spray painting. Do you know what I mean? Just be extra careful with um, etch primer and wear gloves. 
Um, quite often, if you're using rattle cans to spray, you'll get a bit on your thumb or something like that, do you know what I mean? And try and avoid that with etching primer, simply for these reasons, okay? Um, just treat it, I'd say, just treat it a little bit more serious um, than, than just a, a rattle can. Although both probably are presenting an equal um, danger, do you know what I mean? So, yeah, just be just be safe, innit? When you're doing this stuff, you got to be safe. Um, yeah, so etching primer. Now, lay it on thinly um don't lay it on too thick so you can see in the picture that's just just one coat you can see some patches where it hasn't it hasn't covered completely um now i'll be honest with you if i'm weathering if i know i'm weathering um an item if i'm weathering the droid i would be tempted to leave it like that so when my paint goes on that you know it will cover it but it will also rub off easier um, and it will give some really great weathering effects. Uh, so there's a, a you know, if you're gonna, if you know you're weathering something, you don't have to wait and make a pristine droid and then weather it with um, acrylic paint. You can do much more than that because you can create real looking weathering, you know, actual weathering as you go from the very beginning. So you know, that's a that's a top tip when it comes to weathering. Don't be frightened to bump it, scratch it not put the paint on properly you know what i mean so some of the paint is off showing the raw metals um you know really really consider it uh you know where you're going and what sort of look you want with your dread could have been lying in our cemetery yeah could have been sick without remedy yeah yeah 